One of the most basic things to learn when starting with any game engine is to get to know its basic reusable blocks, in many of them called components. Default offers ready-to-use components covering most fundamental functionalities with a lot of configurability. This tutorial is for the beginners and gives a very generic overview of all components. So let's check out what we can use in our games. Let's start with revising the fundamental building blocks, for which I already made a more detailed video. Everything in default starts with a game object. It has its own ID and one necessary built-in component, the transform, with position, rotation and scale. To any game object we can assign any components, and those are needed for example for physics, to represent the object visually, or to add sound, or logic, and a lot more. Game objects can be then grouped in something called collections. Imagine a level collection with a level terrain, some coins to collect, obstacles and a checkpoint to reach, where each of those are game objects with components. Let's start the overview with some visual representation, and one of the most fundamental, sprite. In the game industry this is a very common component and it is interesting itself to learn a history about it and its name too. Anyway, it is a 2D bitmap. It can be one static frame or it can be animated, consisting of a lot of frames. It has its common properties but also specifies ones like image or animation. You can assign a texture of a sprite from a compound called Atlas, which is simply some kind of gallery of images. Or you can choose a tile source component, another one describing a texture but a very specific one, consisting of square images of the same size called tiles. But this is more used in another component to which we can smoothly transit now, I mean the tile map. You can use those tiles to create a map with a grid compliant with the size of the tiles. Default comes with a built-in tile map editor, but you can also utilize external map making tools like Tiled or Tile Setter and import them to default. Another way of adding 2D visuals is by using skeletal animation, and for default there are two solutions for this, both of them optional and delivered as extensions. First one is a spine model component, which describes a set of images connected to each other like bones in a skeleton, that you can conveniently animate. You need to provide a spine scene that you can get from the software for such animations called Spine or its free alternative Dragon Bones. The second is a very fresh, actually work in progress component called, also by software name, Rive, allowing to use animations made in Rive, a modern web tool that allows not only to create skeletal animations and mesh deformations, but also for unusual interactivity. With smooth transition using state machines, interpolations and inverse kinematics. Then comes the last visual representation, usually used for special effects, called Particle Effects Component. You can use them to create explosions, bursts, splatters, trails, weather or any other effects. Particle effects themselves can consist of any combination of two elements, emitters and modifiers. You can really arrange a lot of properties to achieve a desired effect, and I will surely create a separate video for them. There is also a nice curve editor that you can utilize here to create even more sophisticated effects on properties during the life cycle of the particles. And as default is a 3D game engine, the particles can also be emitted in the third dimension. So as we moved actually to 3D visual representation, default has a special component for 3D models. So you can create 3D games or 2D games or mixed ones. You can specify animation and mesh properties here and default supports collada files, but while making this video a new release of default added a support for a well-established GLTF format. There is also a component allowing to create so-called skyboxes with a cube map textured from six sides. Last 3D element is a mesh component, different from the model which can have multiple meshes. Mesh, however, supports custom vertex formats and some other properties that you can modify at will. Next component is a label. Simple as it sounds, it is for displaying a text. You can modify the font, material, colors, shadows or add an outline to make it stand out. Actually, you can define materials for all visual components. You can modify the render pipeline in default to suit your needs. 
you can specify different predicates that will define what is generated with different materials with custom shaders divided into two parts, fragment and vertex programs. And with a custom render script that determines how things are rendered and a view projection to determine where the things are rendered. This could be also dynamic with a use of the camera component with some properties like field of view or projection type. Default comes also with powerful tools to design and create user interfaces with its special GUI component meant for this. You can create any GUI you can imagine with a use of only a few types of nodes, boxes, pies and texts. You can control the logic of the GUI with a separate GUI script. And you can also utilize customizable properties and elements like texture for nodes from atlases and tile sources, specific fonts, use of layers and different layouts for horizontal and vertical orientations, and also skeletal animations and particle effects. If you want to add physics simulation to your game, you can use collision object components for this. And while this component's name might be misleading here, it is solely for the purpose of defining a collision, for example to which group the object is assigned and with which groups it should interact. You can also add here shapes of the collisions and there are built-in shapes for primitives like boxes, spheres and capsules. There is a possibility also to use a generated shape matching an image of a tile for tile maps which allows to effortlessly create shapes for levels. Default uses a built-in bullet physics engine for 3D or a slightly modified version of Box2D for 2D. For defining the logic you can attach script components. Scripts in default are written in Lua and you can also write something like libraries to reuse chunks of code by using Lua modules. There are also other useful components like sound which is used to add and control audio in your game. There is a special input binding for specifying which inputs causes which actions. So for example you can assign one action to both mouse clicks, some keys on keyboard and buttons on gamepads, for which there are also separate configuration options. To dynamically create game objects in runtime you can use factory components and for instantiating whole collections, collection factories or collection proxies for loading the collections. All of the components deserve separate videos and tutorials explaining them in detail but also for more information I can recommend checking out default's documentation. And well, that's all for the overview of the components in default.